Well, I'm getting ready to dissect this thing. You may remember this is the mock wall section I made up to test to see if certain calibers could make it all the way through the length, the three and a half inch width of a stud. And you know, I kind of knew that uh, most of the calibers were not going to be captured. I uh, was excited to see a couple were, mostly the 22. So we'll see what happens when we start dissecting this thing to see if we got anything else. Maybe some bullet fragments. The ones that interest me the most are this. This is a 9mm and this was a 45 and this was a 22 caliber 22 caliber and what else I believe that was a that was a 762 a 762 but I believe some of these came out the side Let's see, these are still laying how they were attached. So I thought I'd take a quick glance. This one appears to be captured. That one does. That was a 45 that came out the edge. That, it came out, yep. It was a nine millimeter that came out. Of course, no, that's a seven six two. That's a seven six two, and they both came out. Let's see, these are both seven six two. Yep, they both came out. Two seven six twos again. Obviously, flew right through it. This one's interesting. Unless it went off at an angle. We'll just have to get into each one of them and see. Let's, let's go after this one first. I think I like this one. Now what I hope to do is just split it right down the middle. You can see where I tried it with the Dremel. The Dremel just wasn't powerful enough for this thickness. Okay, I'm starting to see bullet fragments. Let's see if I can slice it this way. Good. Okay, so before I do any more dissecting, maybe I can try to get a close up of the bullet. You know, a stud is about three and a half inches. Well, it is three and a half inches wide, so it looks to be about two and three quarters. Uh, let me just go get a tape measure that'll solve that. Okay, just to show you what we're looking at, this was the stud here like that. That's three and a half inches. Two before is actually inch and a half by three and a half. So I split this open. This would fold back like this. So we're looking at about, I'm calling it about two and a half, two and three quarters. I can actually see part of the indentation. So now let's try to get that slug out. This is gonna be hard to do with one hand. I'm trying to keep the angle of the camera so you can see.
pretty much retained I'm not as fancy as Teen Outdoors. I need to get a scale, but it looks like it retained most of its weight. Okay, that was fun. Let's try another one. Okay, what's impressive there is that it looks like we have about the same amount of penetration on the stud. Yep, about two and a half inches. So I'm pretty happy with that as far as you know being able to capture the slugs and look at the, pen the amount of penetration. Okay guys well I've done enough damage for one afternoon. The interesting thing about this is that since we did stop these two 22 caliber bullets we could actually do some calculations to see what velocity our 762x39 and our other calibers were doing as they exited the uh, stud. And then you could actually from there deduct what kind of forces you might have. In other words, let's just make it easy math. Let's say these are running at 1200 feet per second. Those are the 762 is running at 2400 feet per second. We stopped this bullet basically at the edge of the stud. Does that mean that when the uh, 762 x 3.9 left the stud it was still traveling around 1200 feet per second? I don't know. I have to do some math. In that case you most definitely wouldn't want to use a 762 x 3.9 because you're talking about a 124 grain bullet. So there's all kinds of uh, you know things to think about here from these results. I'm sure I'll think of some way to make this video important. <laughs>